Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Kevin Gray. I'm the sound manager and instructor at the University of Wisconsin Parkside. Uh, usually I go, I'm the sound manager instructor here because we're usually at Parkside, but here we are via Zoom. I also sound manage and instruct from my office at home. Um, so I am a sound designer by trade. Uh, so that encompasses a good number of things, uh, which includes audio engineering. So recording, mixing, engineering, doing live mixing of bands. Uh, but it also includes uh, creating uh, a lot of sound uh, for, in this case, I do a lot of theatrical shows. So the theater department and music department kind of share me on campus. Uh, I work in the music department as someone who teaches uh, sound production from a engineering standpoint. And for the theater department, I work with uh, them to create all the sound design and backing sound and engineering for their shows. So that includes hooking up big, like, oops, hit my mic, Oop, uh, big, uh, like, surround sound systems. They'll end up playing uh, sounds that I create through, uh, and that's usually through a software called QLab. Uh, we're not gonna be looking at QLab today, uh, but I did want to kind of share what it's like to be a sound designer because uh, it's a very musically inclined, very musical uh, field to be studying. And it is legitimately a field you can study. Uh, I got my degree at uh, Michigan Technological University. Uh, and it is a degree specifically in sound design with a minor in music composition. Um, those two things go kind of hand in hand. Uh, and so we're just gonna, I'm just gonna take you through kind of what we do here. Uh, I tend to present best if it's just conversational and hanging out. So if you end up with any questions, uh, let me get the chat over on my side here if you want to send it in the chat. Uh, if you want to also just be like, hey, Kevin, tell me about that. Uh, midway through, go ahead, unmute and like ask me a question. Uh, it's literally what I do in class. Um, so uh, this first show that we're going to look at is called The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. It is a mouthful of a title. Uh, but it is one of my favorite shows to design, uh, gloomy pictures. And the show is really, really high energy. There's a lot of uh, movement. It's a lot, we call it very frenetic show. Um, you see, we got like LEDs and cubes and those cubes are really cool. Like anytime you push a button on them on one side, uh, they would light up and then they'd be dark everywhere, every other time. Giant polygon mice and projections. Um, and it's a story about um, Chris uh, and how he kind of gets through this uh, detective work of finding out who killed his neighbor's dog. Uh, Chris experiences the world very differently from us as an audience. And so it's my job as a sound designer and us as a theater company to make sure that we understand things from Chris's perspective. Uh, that's kind of one of the great things about theater is that we're able to uh, really help people discover how you might see something from someone else's shoes. Uh, and so in this case, Chris is a uh, very, very uh, unique individual. Uh, but what excites me about this show, aside from the fact that we get to tell this really cool story, is that we get to do it in this really fun way. You see there, there's a, oh, we didn't get the part where the Tetris blocks coming down. There's part where he's playing Tetris in his room. Um, and so for this show, we ended up uh, writing a lot of uh, what it's it kind of nears EDM or electronic dance music. We ended up writing a lot of electronic music that got used for uh, basically every scene. There was a transition and it was very heavily like movement based for these transitions. Uh, and so this is kind of like give you a visual flavor of the show. And if you want to listen to any of the stuff that I make and produce, you should be seeing Spotify now. You can look up this name, Hexaco, and you can find uh, pretty well any of the music I've been doing. Uh, there's more coming soon. Uh, and so this two disc track or two disc album, uh, even though there was no physical release, is all the music that was written for that show. And you can see a lot of it ended up a little bit shorter because uh, a lot of it covers these transitions. But what was cool is I got to work with the actors on building these scenes um, in rehearsal. So. Uh, I'd be there in rehearsal and we'd either record rehearsal and they'd send it to me and then I could sit down at my computer, watch the video and write music to it later. Or uh, I could be in there in rehearsal space and I could work live with the actors and go, hey, here's, I got this drum beat that I really like. Do um, you think we can work from that and build this scene up and up? And they'll be like, yeah, cool, let's do a thing there. I'm like, oh, let me add 
let me add these synthesizers. Let me add this like cool like electronic loop thing happening here. And I'll be oh, and then there we can do like something to build up on the movement with that. And so I'm just gonna like, go through a couple of the songs here. We'll take a listen. Um, let's see. Oh, here's here's really the big one. Uh, so there's a part where he launches into space. Um, that's it's sort of like this dream he's having where he and his pet mouse Toby or pet rat Toby uh, end up flying into space. And so I had to figure out how to give the audience that that vibe of them going through space. So uh, I'm going to mute my mic and we're just going to listen to this for a little bit. astronaut and then we get into the part where he goes through his imagining of a space launch so here's our rocket taking off floating around in space, right? And so we get to work through all these like scenes and emotions and feelings, which is really cool. But uh, part of what I really like about it is, so right now I'm playing this through Spotify, over Zoom, and then through whatever you're listening to, right? Um, come at the time of the show, what was really fun is that as kind of, I got to be the engineer backing myself up on this, is I got to build this huge system where this wasn't, you know, you sitting at home with, you know, your screen on and your headphones. Uh, it's you in a space where I have uh, upwards of 16 speakers around you. And all of these sounds are moving three-dimensionally through space. Uh, that big rocket, that but 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 thing, that's through, through two giant subs coming through either side of the space. And so on either side of you, you have this big rumbling. Uh, and we're sort of able to make it even vertical movement. Uh, we're able to do that. You know, we, we think a lot horizontal movement because uh, we listen to headphones and we're we call binaural listeners where we have a left and a right. Um, but I'm able to kind of really play with where the sound is. Uh, but you see, I also get to play with a lot of fun sounds. Um, we're at orchestra day, but uh, that was all electronic instruments and some drum samples. Um, and so a lot of what I do is I, I create, I'm actually, a, I'm a very poor string player. Uh, I come from the world of jazz and saxophone um, and now electronic music. Um, and so I get to play with all these synthesizers and all these softwares that help me write this music. Uh, and then I get to implement it with uh, people in real time, which is uh, one of the things I absolutely love seeing is especially like movement and emotion, like characters that, you know, there's, there's meaning to the song then. Uh, it's also a great way to kind of force myself to write music, I find. Uh, because if I have a script and a deadline, it's a lot easier for me to go, oh, I need to make this and it needs to be like this. 
Uh, whereas, you know, if you're kind of given that blank canvas of, hey, Kevin, you should just make some music because you can. Um, there's kind of like that uh, big empty blank canvas of like, well, what do I want to make really? Um, and so I really like having that extra direction to go with. Um, and you could hear all sorts of plant, uh, all sorts of classical ideas in that. Uh, there's a couple of simple chord changes uh, for a very simple progression, but a lot of rising motion, both within the notes of the instruments and also with the character of the instruments, right? Those synths didn't just play one note, then play another note higher. They would smoothly transition note to note, almost like a trombone sliding. Uh, but I can do that with different parameters as well. So whether it's um, how the tonality of the instrument sounds, um, you know, it's, it all becomes part of that performance the same way that you might perform, you know, you might get a little more aggressive as you get louder. And so that changes your tone as a musician. Uh, I get to kind of design that for entire songs, which uh, that's, that really excites me. I hope it excites you too. Um, and so it's uh, one of those really awesome experiences. Uh, and also lots of arpeggios, right? They had tons of arpeggios. Um, arpeggios are magic. That's the kind of the quick and, quick and dirty of that. Uh, and so there's a whole bunch of music from Curious. Uh, the students tell me it's good music to study to. Uh, I'll take their word for it. They're getting good grades. So um, if you need some good grades, go listen to that. Uh, you can also find some, some old stuff I did. Uh, when I was an undergrad, yay. Um, and so that was a curious incident, um, which as you can see, like, especially with all like the LEDs and all these walls lighting up, uh, the electronic style of music kind of really fit the show. Uh, we did another show, which um, for, uh, I guess we'll say uh, PG reasons, we're allowed to keep it, or I'm not allowed to really tell you too much about the show, but, um, a show with a, a title uh, that can't be shared, but it had another bunch of music. Only this time, it's a show that, uh, let me get that window back up. Uh, it's a show that had a very different um, tone to it. It's a show about uh, this writer, um, and he actually writes the play that we are producing at the moment. Um, oh yeah, there you go, I can't show you that. Um, so we've got uh, we've got this show about this playwright, and he it's a very very kind of uh, dark show. Um, there's a lot of emotion, and it's rooted very much in reality. Uh, so electronic music doesn't necessarily fit it really well. If we have this uh, show being produced in an old abandoned theater, and it's all dusty. Um, and there's like a half broken piano that no one's played for maybe half a decade uh, sitting in the corner. Uh, the electronic music isn't going to cut it, right? I can't really be like a one tone composer there. Uh, and so we ended up with a lot of these uh, quick small transitions, um, which you can see again, lots of, I'm assuming you're seeing my Windows browser now with a bunch of like cones. Um, there's a bunch of music there that uh, was really easy to kind of fill in that, that void. Uh, Cause this was a Zoom production or not a Zoom production. It was a, a streamed theater show. Uh, so every night it was performed live, streamed through five cameras and sent out to the world. Uh, so all these still had to happen in real time with actors. Um, only this time they're actors on a camera. And so uh, we would cover these transitions and each transition also came with a, uh, a title card because uh, all the scenes are titled. And so we'd have all these different titles and we'll just listen to a couple here. And so we have some of these fun little different textures. A lot of very piano-y things. This is one where he gets angry. I think that's when he gets angry. But I had it. I had it. Yeah. There we go. Thwarted. That's when he gets angry on. Where was it? I lost the thing. So we've got all these kind of weird little. 
piano tones, right? Um, well, weird piano tones don't just exist and are easy to come by. Uh, it turns out you have to get them. So uh, we did a lot of what was called prepared piano for this, which is uh, my assistant and I would, there we go. That's Starlin Howard, my assistant for that show, uh, student. So if you come to Parkside, you can be a student who works with me on shows. Um, and so you can see we got two mics here on our piano and we played it in all sorts of weird ways. Uh, in this case, we're just playing it like it's a harp, right? Open top. Uh, we, I, I didn't photograph uh, too many of the other ways we played our piano because uh, I didn't want evidence. Uh, it was, uh, we would take a lot of tape actually um, and gently and not irreparably uh, tape certain notes of the piano. And that's how we got some of those other weird piano-y tones, uh, some of those like harsher textures. Uh, and so we would take all sorts of different tones from the piano and then uh, mix them down later. This is kind of our, when we're going through our process, uh, talking with our design team, this is kind of our visual inspiration. It's nice to have an idea to work from. Um, musical inspiration. Anytime I do a show, I put together a giant Spotify list of artists I like and are kind of in the vibe I want. There we go, there's the file. And so we recorded this piano. You can see at the very top here, I have just, I sat down for, I think it was like two different days. I sat down and just read through the script and played all these transitions and kind of composed on the spot what they were. Um, that's kind of a, a benefit I have from being a, a jazz artist is improv is kind of my native way of doing things. Uh, and so we take them and edit them down later, maybe add some like extra reverb. Uh, but for the most part, it was these two tracks of that. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that this is actually nominated for a, uh, a national uh, award at the Candy Center. Uh, I hopefully am finding out about that soon. Well, we'll see. Um, oh, and here we see uh, some of our early blocking. This is a, one of those uh, samples of like a video that they'll send me and then I write music to the video. Um, so this is Logic, by the way, Logic Pro. Um, if you have a Mac, you can get it. Uh, I also use Ableton, which is Mac and PC friendly. Um, if you want a quick, easy intro software to learn, uh, it's not quite as robust, but it is super free. It's called Audacity. You've probably already heard of it. Um, you can't beat the price. It's free and you can do stuff with it. Um, and so we got this, uh, I got this rehearsal video. You can see like the set's really bare. Um, and so they, the actors did this improvised dance routine that they cemented in rehearsal and they're okay we got through this dance weird choreography bit uh this is what's going to be let's send it to kevin and so they sent it to me and using a bunch of different instruments and samples i found uh i ended up writing some music for that let's see there's my visual things folder i need to get back to the music folder um this would be interlude do, do, do. Uh, I think I have this one in pieces. Oh no, that means we can't listen to the full thing at once. Unless. Oh, I have demo versions of it. So, right, demos are good now if you guys like demos. So, that would be this weird abstract dream like. Actually, it's great. And each of the characters as they would dance and come in and out of the center of the stage had their own instrument. So this first one's one of the more gentle, nice characters. Uh, she's very pleasant to listen to, so she's a pleasant bunch of strings. Uh, next one is the very angsty uh, son. He has this angry kind of slow guitar. Sorry, this is the mom. She gets the slow, angry guitar. She's still a very angry person. <laughs> and then we move from her into this writer. He's kind of got it all together. And so he gets really pleasant sounding. Kind of sinky. Anyway. And then we get to the angry side. And like his mother, he has a guitar. Only he's a little less melodic, right?
Uh, and so we went through a couple more iterations of it to kind of get the feel right um, for that moment. And it's cool seeing it come together with actors and uh, when the completed set looked amazing. Uh, and especially the way that the uh, lighting designer would light it up. Uh, and this, this show too won, uh, or no, this is the same show. So yeah, it won some awards, it's cool. Um, and so that's kind of the, the quick theatrical side of things. Oh, there's a screenshot of what I do in Ableton. Um, which if you wanted, uh, let's see, looking at time here. Oh, I'm at time actually. I was gonna say we could open up Ableton and play with some things, but 20 minutes flies by. Uh, if anyone has any like questions or anything, I'm totally good to hang out during the break. If you want to do that, how can I get into that? Um, I'm around. Let me. Uh... Awesome. I guess I can. Stop well, sharing. thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, no problem.